Hey guys, so I thought that today we were going to talk a little bit about why I sh think that, well, most like, I, if you're using Jest for your test driven development purposes, and then this video is probably just going to confirm some stuff that you already noticed, I suppose. But if you are using Karma or Mocha, I think that we should have a little bit of a talk um, about why I think you should move over to Jest. So, first and foremost, Karma is a browser-based test runner. And in essence, what it does is that it simulates a headless browser, which is great for most intents intended purposes. However, Jest will do that for you as well. So you can, like, the benefits of using Jest versus Karma, which is, like, Karma only it provides you with the, like, the test runner. However, Jest has that plus quite a few more things going on for it. So <clears throat> and if you're already using, if you're using Karma, then, of course, like, if you're doing Angular development and you use a lot of Angular-specific stuff, there's tons of great things that you know karma can provide for you but if you're starting out now you know you know take a look at jest because karma i think like i think karma has been pretty uh like it's not really keeping up with like with jest and the one thing it has above like over on mocha is that mocha is really like mocha is really performant but it does not simulate a browser environment it's all in node right you can get around that but there's more trickery to it than just you know you know it takes a little bit of a setting up to get that to work which brings us to mocha so Mocha we used to be my absolute favorite test run and in for some cases it still is and like it's it's fairly recently I moved over to Jest. So Mocha is all node based and it's lightning fast when it comes to running all your tests. Now the reason I've figured out or me and my colleagues we've experimented a little bit about uh, with it and I'm not, you know, don't quote me on this, but it seems that the reason why Mocha can be so performant is because it doesn't actually reset the test running context. So if you're say when you say that you just want to run a single like test or file or anything like that, Mocha is actually still iterating over all of the files and pulling them into the context, but not executing them. Uh, and that that's basically it. Now, that's not much of a problem for most scenarios, but it does, we found that we had some issues with resetting stateful, uh, stateful tests. And ideally you don't want them to be stateful, but we had, a, we used an old version of Reflux, which is basically, it's the data store that it uses is a singleton. And what happened is in essence that you did these muta you you created mutations and because mocha is running everything in the same context it doesn't reset the state which means that whenever we were each test mute like in row is going to mutate the next test so the dep I mean, that's a really important rule for test driven development you don't want your tests to be dependent on each other now you can make an argument that you can use a before each or an after each or whatever to like do some bootstrapping there but it's worth knowing that that's the case but i honestly this is just i'm just putting that that in there to you know as a pro and a con type like just a fyi thing my if there's if there's one thing i'm not like such a big fan of when it comes to mocha is that the mocha runner is once again it's just a runner and in order to be effective and like put a, a good like test suite for say react or any type of other development you are going to need mocha you're going to need shy or some other assertion library you can use the node native one as well but you know you most people use shy then you have sign on and then you're going to have to use like something like istanbul for coverage and you have all these like if you want to have a really nice testing environment professional grade testing environment and i'm talking not not just your own little project but like like in my case ticketmaster level or klarna level or google level 
you're going to have to have all these tools. And see, my opinion about having dependencies is that you want to have as few dependencies as possible. With uh, I, there's always pros and cons, but the 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 issue is when you have all these in the independent libraries that do different things you need to fit them together and one thing that's really that's not a such a nice experience is to try and get your coverage tool like istanbul to work with e jsx or stuff like that and we ha used a go between called isparta to do that and it was just really messy and compatibility issues and all that Ugh, it was just a lot of work and then we go over to Jest, and Jest has everything that Mocha does. Like all the tools that I used to use in order to make, which made me really like Mocha, I, I got from Jest immediately. I'm really impressed with how well Facebook has designed that framework. At first, I was a little bit skeptical because, like, if you run all your tests, it's fairly much slower than running in them in Mocha. But I realized why that is as well. It's a linear problem where Jest will, like, because Jest does actually reset and execute each test in an isolated context so that the statefulness that I was describing in Mocha doesn't really exist. And if you do test driven development, you actually have an out of the box watcher, which you don't. And this is, which you can set up for Mocha as well. So it's not much of a problem. And you get all kinds of other awesome things. Like you get snapshot testing, which is really cool, where you basically create a little snapshot of a function that does something correctly. And then you just keep that around. And whenever you do a change or something to your code, that will output a different value from that function or you know, in your React code, one problem that I see all the time is that people, you know, that you have CSS class names and then you have a typo of some sort and all of a sudden all your CSS breaks in production. But snapshot testing takes a snapshot of the entire state of your component so you never have that problem, which I think is, it's really great. It's reduced my bugs by a lot. So that's that's another thing I really like about it and the mo biggest benefit apart from it being supported by a really large company like Facebook is that it's all under one umbrella solution without forcing you into a lock-in in essence because the like it's very easy for you if you don't like Jest you can want to go back to Mocha you can actually do that you can switch between these two pretty easily so you're not like locking yourself into Facebook and I think that's a fairly something that I think is important, but it's also not the most important thing. I think the most important thing is how easy it is to get started with Jest and how easy it is for developers who are new to the framework to adopt it. And, uh, and on top of it all, it actually has some stuff that mo the other frameworks don't really have. And, you know, ease of access is really, really important. Like when I was setting all this up for Ticketmaster, I was really cons like I, I because whenever, like, I mean, for me, who is like looking into these things all the time and really passionate about what I do and I want to keep up to date, this is a passion of mine. So it's easy for me to adopt these new practices. And maybe it is for you too. But remember that if you're on a large project, you know, you have to respect that some people on your team may, I mean, they might have families or maybe they're they have different hobbies and stuff like that and you mean they're really good at what they do but they're not like they don't want to spend all their time learning new tools over and over and over again which is a little bit of a sickness in the javascript community because it's it's a quote from one one of my colleague and mark if you're watching this this is for you he said that a lot of people mistake especially in javascript they mistake movement for progress and what i think he means by that is that just because you you find a new shiny tool and you change something to like to, you start migrating to it it doesn't mean that it's providing all that much value you're just changing something because you want to change it so that's what i like about Jest. it's a it will give you everything that the current tools are giving you today without almost any knowledge overhead and it's like you get going really really quickly so yeah that's my little hype about the pros and cons about Jest and Karma and Mocha and so forth. I mean, you can use whatever you want, but you know, I highly recommend that if you're doing professional level development, Jest is the way to go.